Good morning, good morning, and welcome. Today we celebrate Trinity Sunday, the basic feast of our Godhead. Three in one, telling us about the mutuality of God. The Father loves the Son, the Son loves the Father, and generates the Holy Spirit, the gift of Christian belief. We gather together in prayer, asking Almighty God to look upon us, to see us, to watch over us, to protect us. And we pray at this fast, in a special way, we remember John, Charles, and Thomas the Lord, Eleanor Nardo, Barbara Green, Suzanne Jurassic Palmieri, Catherine Kahn, Jessica Childs, Urban McGreary. So, let us join together by making the sign of the cross, giving praise to the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. And to prepare ourselves, we ask the Lord God to forgive us our sins. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to life and Amen.
a reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up onto Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in the cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, the Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff necked people. Yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, we have entered the ordinary time of the year. Ordinary, not in the sense that it is bland and tasteless and not much celebration and activities. Last Sunday, we just concluded the 50 days of Easter with Pentecost and the Pascal candle is out of beside the temple, the lectern or the pulpit and back to the baptistry. In baptism, the first sacrament, the very first sacrament of initiation, we are men, the children of the one true God. This one true God is a mystery. And today, the feast of the Most Holy Trinity, a solemnity, invites us to live in the awareness of the presence of the triune God, the three persons in one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The mystery of the Holy Spirit, a doctrine, which was clearly discussed, clarified, and made an article of faith in the councils of Nicaea and Constantinople is one of the fundamental doctrines of Christianity, the greatest mystery of our faith, namely that there are three divine persons sharing the same one divine nature in one God. It's like this mathematics that doesn't add up in the normal way we add things. One plus one plus one equals one. That's why it is a mystery. But it is true because mystery is the truth inside the deep truth but beyond human comprehension. There is one God, yet three persons as in the Christian Catholic, the Christian Catholic doctrine number 234 and 253 to 256. We have the Father who is the Creator, the Son who is the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit who is the Sanctifier and the Counselor. If we keep talking about the Trinity for us to comprehend, to clearly understand, it will be impossible. St. Patrick of Ireland used the clove leaf, some call it a shamrock, to describe the Trinity, because there are three leaves in one stalk. But that is not a very clear way to understand the Trinity. Whenever I remember that my mind goes to a conjoined twin with three heads in one body, but still that's not the, the best way to describe the Trinity. St. Augustine one day as a philosopher wanted to understand it. He started walking around the seashore trying to comprehend completely the mystery of the Trinity. As he was doing this, there appeared from nowhere at the seashore where there was nobody. And this child got a small hole by the seashore, was going to the water, using her little hands to 
get some water and put in the room. St. Augustine stopped and said, Who are you? What are you doing? The little child said, I'm just trying to take all the water from the ocean and put it in my little bowl here. Augustine said, Do you have a human brain? How do you think this is possible? And the child looked at Augustine and said, So, are uh, you? You think with your limited human brain you will understand the Trinity? And the child disappeared. And that became the traditional story to help us forget about completely understanding the Trinity. Again, there was a bishop who came to confirmation. The kids were dressed up. And the bishop wanted to interview them as they traditionally do. He called up a small, one of the young girls at the front seat and said, Who can tell me what confirmation is? Somebody described it to the confirmation. A sacrament that we receive the Holy Spirit in full to become adult Christians. And from there, the bishop said, If the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, who can tell me what the Trinity is? Another young person stood up and started to describe the Trinity as we learnt in the Catechism. It is the mystery of the three persons in one God. They are not three, but one, yet three persons. Unfortunately, that bishop was hard of hearing and she didn't come, uh, understand what the last thing the girl said. So the bishop said to the girl, Pardon me, I cannot under I don't I did not understand you. The little girl boldly said to the bishop, Bishop, it is a mystery, you are not supposed to understand it. And it became a story to help us comprehend and actually not completely comprehend or understand the Trinity. So, what we do today that we celebrate the Trinity as we enter the ordinary time of the year is to reaffirm our belief in the Triune God. And we do this whenever we make the sign of the cross. The sign of the cross, when we make it, we impart a powerful blessing and invocation of the greatest name on earth. We begin our prayers with that. We do that at baptism. We end our prayers at that. I would like us to end this reflection by advising people who normally say, I cannot pray. When you feel you cannot pray, today, reinvigorate, reignite, try to bring to understand the powerful invocation of the Trinity. When you feel you cannot pray, just make a prayerful sign of the cross. We do that at the beginning of every prayer and the end of every prayer. And it is a powerful prayer in itself. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joy together in the profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God of the Father. Born the Father before all angels, God from God, life from life, true God from true God. Be God from that being, consubstantial with the Father, through all things were made. For us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. 
He has sent into heaven in the seat at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism of forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As we celebrate the mystery of the Holy Trinity, let us bring our prayers before the Lord. For the Church, drawn from all nations and languages, may our triune God guide and sustain us as we proclaim the good news. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you are our prayer. For all in civil power and authority, may the Holy Spirit enkindle in their hearts servant leadership. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those enduring trials and challenges during this pandemic crisis, the coronavirus, may they be uplifted by the loving presence of God and the support and compassion of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us, in worship of the triune God, may the communion of love he outpours preserve us in faith and increase us in our holiness each day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick of the parish and families, and all those who find in nursing homes, hospitals, and shut-ins, that the Lord come and comfort them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, Joseph Abbey, Augusta Gorrieri, Anthony Palumbo, Thomas Guy Caprio, Gerhard Kistner, Danny Stano Jr., Glenna Whiting, Ida Chargulo, Jane Mucci, Arthur Stanton, Lydia Orlandi, Sister Rosa Santa, Jeanette Bianco, Anthony Zagaranza, Silverio Mazzella. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All holy God, great and beyond all our imaginings, we rejoice to call ourselves your sons and daughters this day. Hear and answer us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. 
our duty and our salvation. Always give way to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and eternal God. For with your only God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us in your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the time of eternal God, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity and substance, and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by the angels and archangels, cherubim to and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice, Give us this day, my dear Lord, and forgive us all our trespasses, 
as we forgive the wrongs which trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but to love yourself. To the rest of the Lord, we pray for evil. Gracious and great peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of the power and the glory of God is now forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace and in my peace and in Look not at our sins, but at the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Grant our Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine love, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to thank you, the whole, for coming out to play the music for this morning's mass. Thank you very much, Emma. And Jim Gray, we have a video in it. We pray that all of you will have a good week, be safe, be well. Hopefully when we have more celebrations, look at the blog, look at the Facebook page of the parish, and we'll keep you informed of how the different openings for Mass as they come to 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us all. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in the peace of Christ.